Today I will be talking about three-point mapping. Here are the fur lengths, leg lengths, and coat colors of cats. In our parental generation, we have two purebred cats, so they are homozygous and opposites of each other. Once we cross the parental generation, we'll get this F1 generation shown in the top left. This generation represents the dominant traits of all the characteristics. The F1 gets one chromosome from one parent and another chromosome from the other parent. Here are the F2 phenotypes. There are eight different categories for three different loci. If the loci were not on the same chromosome and not linked and an independent assortment was occurring, we expect the same number of observed, but this is not the case. But now let's determine the classes. We can easily figure out the no crossovers and double crossovers. The most common class is no crossovers, so that is the largest group. The least common class is double crossovers because they are unlikely, so this is the smallest group. Here all four of the classes are shown and I have reorganized the chromosomes to the correct order of loci. I have also shown the correct crossing for each event. Here are the reordered phenotypes of the F2 generation and the classes that correspond with them. With this information, you can create a three-point linkage map. You can also find the R1 and R2 distance and C value. At R1, there is a 24.97 centimorgan distance between the leg length and fur length loci. For every centimorgan, there is a 1% chance of crossing over between the loci. This means there is a 24.97 chance of crossing over between the leg length and the fur length loci. Here are the probabilities of all gamete types. For the sake of time, I will only explain how to get two probabilities. To get the probability of a double crossover, you first find the probability of the event occurring, which is R1 times R2 times the coefficient of coincidence. When you do that, you get 0.0351, and then you want to multiply that by one half to get the probability of a certain gamete resulting from this event. You multiply by one half because the gamete can only have one of two alleles of a given locus. To get the probability of a single crossover at region one, you first find the probability of the event occurring, which is R1 minus the double crossover event. When you do that, you get 0 0.214649, and then you want to multiply that by one half to get the probability of a certain gamete resulting from this event.